And welcome to Subjective Cinema, where everything's made up and the critics don't matter. I am your host and ill-fated school teacher, Anna Dodds. And today I'm here with my dad, John Dodds, to talk about Alfred, Hitch- Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. There we go. Uh, so, yeah. Hello, Father. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Well, yes, I am a uh, closet thespian who uh, is a 65-year-old lover of Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, all things Alfred Hitchcock, and uh, having seen his work for probably at least 55 of those 65 years. I'm the son of a mother who strangely resembles Jessica Tandy, who plays a key role in this film. Uh, Tippi Hedren uh, was an early crush uh, of mine, and uh, and I also studied Alfred Hitchcock in college and uh, was also the projectionist for that same course at least a couple more times as it was delivered. So got a lot of uh, Hitchcock through osmosis and through study. So, I would say you are also a filmmaker. Oh yeah, I'm an occasional filmmaker and uh, <laughs> Terror from Planet Xenon keeps making the rounds 40 years after it was made. And, it does. Uh, I'm still proud of it. Uh, yeah, it that's fair. Definitely informed by uh, my study of Alfred Hitchcock when I when I did it. So That's true. It is, it is in its own weird, quirky way, a suspense film. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, through the parallel editing and uh, the dynamics of, yeah, there's definitely suspense. Pitch, this isn't usual, is it? We've been out back looking at the chickens. Something seems to be wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with those chickens, Mitch. Have you seen any good movies lately? Which I would say I would have to know about, but I don't really watch TV or movies with y'all anymore. So, like, what well, is the last thing we saw? I guess the key wasn't... word is good movies. Uh, as, as fun as it was to watch Gal Gadot and uh, Chris Pine do anything... Yeah, I, I, it's hard for me to put uh, Wonder Woman 84 in the good movie category. Well, it's closer. I mean, the other quote unquote movies we watch regularly is, you know, Rift Tracks and MST3K and, you know, Red Letter Media, Best of the Worst, all of that. So comparatively. Well, I mean, the, the movie that first came to mind when I read that note uh, was and you probably already know this, The Invisible Man. Oh, yeah, you love The Invisible Man. Which I can't get anyone in my family to watch with me, but it's... No, this is true. Talk about Hitchcockian suspense and somebody who probably also grew up uh, in the pocket of uh, of the master. That's the damnest thing I ever saw, and I know it seemed to swoop down at you deliberately. Birds are not aggressive creatures, miss. They bring beauty into the world. It is mankind, rather, who insists upon making it difficult for life to exist upon this planet. Especially considering that you are both retired and in quarantine, what are you doing to keep busy? (laughs) What aren't you doing to keep busy? I recently assembled a loom. That is true. Your wife is very excited. Loom project was uh, was very satisfying. Two days of uh, manual labor that then has an end product. It, yeah. it beats it beats cleaning the house and doing laundry, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's fair. That loom is actually right next to me. So I'm for um, for the visual version. Let's see if I can tilt this around. Oh, well, there you go. There's there it is. It. That's something like a look at it. There's a little bit of it. But you're also looking straight at a light, so maybe not very helpful. <laughs> several, several hundred parts. Uh, I recently married off a daughter. That was a proud moment. That is true. That'll be a funky thing about this release. Uh, in Cameron's episode of this, they say they are my partner, which is still true. But also, we did get married since that got recorded. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's, told, that's true. Ladies and gentlemen, you're on the other side of it now. <laughs> uh, I have been uh, busy during quarantine and the quarantine months with a with in-person quartet singing and virtual chorale singing yeah that's Uh, that's another filmmaking credit you have to your name you have put together you know also several were put together you know professionally but early in quarantine you put together a quartet video put together i i have hopes of doing a uh 
Babylon trio with myself uh, <laughs> soon. So that's uh, that's in the works. I've, <laughs> I've made one unsuccessful version of it. The sound <laughs> is great, but the uh, visual is just a little too menacing for what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Um, the Birds is a 1963 American natural horror thriller film produced and directed by Alfred Hitchcock, loosely based on the 1952 story of the same title by Daphne du, let's say, Maurier. Beautiful. It focuses on a series of sudden and unexpected violent bird attacks on the people of Bodega Bay, California, over the course of a few days. The film stars Rod Taylor, Tippi Hedren in her screen debut, Jessica Tandy, Suzanne Plachette, and Veronica Cartwright. The screenplay is by Evan Hunter, who was told by Hitchcock to develop new characters and a more elaborate plot while keeping Dumarier, there we go, just got to read it out, um, keeping Dumarier's title and concept of unexplained bird attacks. In 2016, The Birds was deemed, quote, culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant, unquote, by the United States Library of Congress and selected for preservation in its National Film Registry. I think really for the first act where there's not a lot of menace about birds. No, it's a rom-com for it's the first like half of it, yeah. Yeah, it's a rom-com, it's a rom-com. Uh, up to and including the delivery of the lovebirds and the little coquettish ducking in the boat uh, to not be seen and him looking through the binoculars and there, there's there's no foreboding and uh, uh, you know that first little taste is when she gets hit with the bird on the way back but then it really comes down hard when we meet mom <laughs> My name is Alfred Hitchcock, and I would like to tell you about my forthcoming lecture. It is about the birds and their age-long relationship with man. In the first act, there were secrets, you know, Mitch uh, talking to, oh, what's, what's Tippy's name? What's her character's name? I don't remember her first name. It's somebody Daniels because everybody calls her Miss Daniels for like 40% oh, right. of the movie. And so that's yeah. just what stuck in my brain. It, it, it'll come to me. But, you know, Mitch, in their first meeting, he knows who she is. Mm -hmm. but she doesn't know he knows, you know, secrets and, and, and the unspoken are a constant current throughout this thing. But they're, they're not they're light and fun in the first act and they're menacing in the second act. The things you don't know about the dead dad and the things you yeah. don't know about, uh, about, about the fear in, uh, oh, I do know her name. Um, come here, mom. Oh, mom. Lydia. Lydia, yes. <laughs> Not the tattooed lady, the other Lydia. Uh, <laughs> And, but at any rate, it's as stories. So there, the second act is menacing and foreboding. It's all about family and it and is all about family under threat or, or with a growing threat. And I don't know, well, for me at least, uh, it then flips to horror. I don't know if it's ahead of the third act or whether it's the trigger of the third act, but, but the visit to the farmer's house, uh, and I think the, that's the midpoint from from both just where I'm pretty sure it falls in time in the movie, but also right. from, you know, cough, cough, having studied screenplay structure, like technically, sure. I think that's midpoint. I would suspect that the third act is actually closer to when they're like locking down the house. Uh, maybe the third act, second act has a lot in it. <laughs> like second act is two court is half the movie. Maybe the second act is uh, the end of the uh, diner sequence. Mm, yeah, maybe that and that could and be. Everybody, everybody heads home. Yeah, the diner sequence is sort of the yeah transition point between Act Two and Act Three. That could totally be it, because you know yeah. this is also one of those movies that you could arguably 
not that the two plots are not intimately connected in their own right, but there are two like sort of arcs going on of the basic suspense arc of the birds stuff, but also right. the character arcs. And so those could be arguably broken up differently. You know, like it's just sort of implications and foreboding until we go to the farmhouse and then it's like, yeah, no, seriously, this is a horror movie about birds. In case you <laughs> missed that, that's what's going on now. You know, that's right. what I think is the hard cut between rom-com and suspense film. Like, I see what you're saying of, like, it gives way as soon as we meet mom, but also, like, mom would be a normal tension for a rom-com, you know? Like, well, that's true. Still that's true. That particular Hitchcock level of foreboding, like, she isn't just, you know, a bitch to be, you know, sort of won over, but also she is at the same time. So that's, you know, right. where it does start to give way, but is still mostly textually rom-com and then you know the the birthday party in the farmhouse and it's like yeah we're this is this is what we're doing now <laughs> yeah yeah they're in terms of uh how they tell story uh and all the some points i, I remember writing down the uh and this shows up i guess i guess throughout but certainly in the second act that thing I was referencing about the, the things that are unsaid. Mm -hmm. There's so many knowing glances. When we meet uh, Ms. Hawthorne, I think is her name. Uh, Annie, the, the teacher? Annie. For some teacher. reason, her first name stuck. <laughs> there we go. I guess because everybody calls her Annie. Everybody calls her Annie. Uh, but you know, the well, I guess uh, Tippy has met mom and uh and explain the the lovebirds and mm -hmm. i can't remember whether annie hears about the lovebirds first or mom hears about the lovebirds first but when each of them hear about the lovebirds they give knowing glances and go oh mm -hmm. i see yeah yeah uh, I which think it's clearly annie means because she stops by annie's house yeah. to get kathy's name that's right and, she and looks so that's down where we car. have the first mm, yeah he he brings home a lot of women whoops Right. But yeah, you know, like, yeah, lots of lots of women come through here looking for Mitch, you know, that implication comes from her first. And so I think that also helps you recognize it in mom's more subtle tells, you know, of like, because mom is closer to just like, huh, you know, like, that's it you get with her, whereas you get a little bit more with Annie. So the, the thing I'm heading towards is, on a filmmaker level, I think it around the same times in the early going of certainly of that second act and certainly as soon as the bird strike has hit uh, Tippy in the head uh, he's doing the same thing with the audience where he's giving these little knowing oh yeah and, and this also is going on oh and we're as an audience we're like oh <laughs> I see. You want to know what I think? What do you think? <laughs> I think that in terms of what Mr. Hitchcock was trying to do, or what I what I think he was trying to do with story and with that that ultimate impact of how long can man abuse nature before nature abuses man. Mm -hmm. uh, my own personal experience, and I haven't traveled the entire world, uh, but I've traveled a lot of the US and San Francisco holds a very particular uh, place in my heart as being a metropolitan area that is nestled in and near some of the most fabulous natural environments that the country has to offer. I mean, you're right across the bay from uh, Muir Woods, uh, Sausalito, the Bay Area all by itself. You're a, you know, you're a short drive to Yosemite. Uh, I mean, there are uh, the, and then the up the coast to Bodega Bay uh, just gets more spectacular in its own way. And mm -hmm. so that cop, but it, but it has that cosmopolitan man is in control 
major metropolitan area. It's not it's not Bodega Bay all by itself. That yeah. that anchoring and starting the story in San Francisco, where man is totally in control of his environment, has you know has mastered water, land, you know, nature in in all its elements. Uh, and then, you know, we're just nearby in Bodega Bay, what, you know, an, an hour up the coast. Something like that. An hour and a half on, on the interstate, two hours. Something like if, that. If yeah. you take the yeah, coast I road. That's it. The story of man and his friends, the birds, is filled with many fine examples of ways in which these noble creatures have added to the beauty of the world. Uh, but I, I think in terms of setting, uh, it's a perfect choice if, for for what I for the impact the film had on me, yeah. Uh, because, because it does have those components of of the natural world and the the man made environment in in urgent and immediate proximity to each other. Acting, acting, acting. something you know quite a lot about comparatively. Um, I guess. Uh, my sense watching these people act uh, was that there was nice chemistry between Mitch and Miss Daniels. I thought they were very natural together. Uh, I thought everyone performed their roles well, though, you know, a little bit of Kathy goes a long, long way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Kathy's a mixed bag for me because on the one hand, like, I sort of wonder if it's just a we don't know what to do with kids on a set kind of time because like I find her crying kind of impressive like that's that's impressive levels of distress for a child acting you know yeah like well, I guess my one thought at this point sitting with it longer is I hope we did not actually distress that child that would be bad about, but not unheard you're talking of. about you're talking about her after uh, discovering Annie. Yeah, yeah, her in the car and, you know, just yeah. all of that. For the rest of the movie, she is traumatized. I and, thought trauma know, was... that with a certain level of nuance for a kid, you know. I thought trauma was her best yeah. trait, her, her best delivery. Uh, the, uh, the, oh, please, Miss Daniels, please, Miss Daniels stuff. <laughs> yeah. And the, all the, you know, the immediate... I'm enthralled and in love with this woman who just walked in the room five minutes ago. That yeah. that was a harder sell mm -hmm. for me than the. You're you're right. That she's she was far more naturalistic. But but I think uh, may, I guess Stanislavski was already being taught. But uh, I I think we're 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 ahead of method acting by several years. So we're yeah. I, I think it's unreasonable for us to expect you know, James Dean levels of performance out of each of these folks. But uh, I th thought all in all, they were naturalistic and and appropriate to the characters. I mean, this is, Alfred Hitchcock is where I learned and I've probably forgotten half of it, but the language of film. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's Alfred Hitchcock who, you know, told me that's uncomfortable. Yeah, you got you, a, know. you got an angled shot. Things yeah. are and, you know, unstable. And, and told me that that was vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, and that was domineering or, or, yeah. or, or, or isolating mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, all, all those different things. So, so I love both being manipulated by that and having learned as as much as I've been able to retain, being in the moment and and understanding what's manipulating me, and yet still suspending my disbelief and succumbing to the emotion of it. I mean, I literally was brought to tears when Lydia had that came racing down the hall from the murdered mm. uh, uh, farmer. I keep telling you, this isn't a few birds. These are gulls, crows, swifts. I have never known birds of different species to flock together. 
the very concept is unimaginable. Why, if that happened, we wouldn't have a chance. We could do two hours just on this if we went back. Yeah, shot we, by we, shot. Yeah, we'd want to be projecting it while talking about it to be able mm -hmm. to, to, to get into the, the realness of it. But it's a, it, I think it's a master class in, in cinematography. Uh, you know, it clubs you over the head sometimes <laughs> when after the sound has gone near the end and the camera gets set low shooting up and it's a wash of ceiling with shadows and just you know the isolation of a solitary mother's head over in the mm -hmm. side of the screen you know anxiously you know listening mm -hmm. and the you know and then we expand the shot back out and I think uh, Kathy maybe appears in a lower frame and then and then foregrounded is Mitch and they're all just listening and you know and you're you're just dying to know what's on the other side of that ceiling mm -hmm. you know but and and you're you're just your ears are buzzing and that's that's all just through the framing and the, the setup of that shot. And I, I guess this is cinematography that I'm talking about. Yeah, it about. is. Yeah, that's but. cinematography. I, I think, you know, the scene you studied, mm -hmm. the discovery of the farmer, yes. the broken teacups, yeah. the slow walk through the kitchen, the, you know, the silent, absolutely silent walk down the hall, mm -hmm. looking into rooms, what what's going on, the the slow pan into the bedroom and the, the focusing on the dead seagull in the broken in the mm -hmm. in the shattered glass, uh, the the tr the pan and then the back to her face and back yeah. to the floor and back to her face and back to the floor. And you know, with each wide eyed discovery and then you know, and then the full frame of the upper torso and the head, and then the zoom in on the face, which yeah. all probably takes place in less than three seconds. Because that's uh, edits, isn't it? It's not a zoom. It's a edit, edit, edit. It's and an edit, edit, edit. Yes, that's a very is. particular impact too. That's not often used. Yeah, but man. Yeah. <laughs> and and then you know, then we're back in the hall, and the uh, you know, and she's. Mm -hmm. fighting her way out of the house mm -hmm. you know I mean nothing's in her way but she's struggling to get as far away from what she just experienced yeah. I'm getting emotional just talking about it you know it, it's you know it's just like oh the horror it, mm -hmm. it's just it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant and 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 that's the editing language that I grew up with yeah and I'm aware from talking with you of you know how ingrained that is in me of in terms of expectations and what I think how how that can be unsettled by a different vision of how editing can work because that that's like Alfred Hitchcock is like English yeah no, I don't mean British it's like my mother tongue There's not a drop of music in this soundtrack. No. Which I can't think of another movie I can say that about. I don't know one off the top of my head. I believe they exist, I mean, but I, I believe they exist, them. but as a major Hollywood release, I, I would say this may be a singular effort. Yeah, I mean, probably. In the same way that Psycho it was well, the soundtrack of only strings, this has a soundtrack what did you call the music, the the singing of the children and the piano playing? Oh, oh, diegetic. Diegetic. Yeah, yeah, the, that fun term, <clears throat> diegetic. So diegetic means um, in the world of the film. So, uh, so generally uh, speaking, though playing with this dynamic is great fun and happens all the time, um, you know, the score is non-diegetic, the dialogue is diegetic. 
you know, the the dialogue is everybody's yes. actually hearing that unless it's a voiceover. Right. And, you know, the score, generally, everybody is not hearing that, but you assume that, and then sometimes your expectations can be played with that way, which is fun. You know, you'll pan over, and lo and behold, someone is actually playing that music, you know, and right, right. turns off the radio, and you move on. But <laughs> but right. generally speaking, so but that's not in the diegetic, birds. non-diegetic. So there's yeah. really not a soundtrack. Everything is diegetic in this, because all the yeah. bird sounds are are in the moment. Yeah, the the uh, the opening credits are the closest you get because you know there's not a sense of place there. Yeah. Everything else, one hundred percent diegetic. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know how they came, how they recorded all of that. How much of it is actual bird sounds, and how much of it is altered bird sounds. I. It's and gotta be altered. Tippy in the room with the birds at the the, the climactic terror scene mm-hmm. uh, because fifty seven years of technical development have taken place yeah. since that scene was first seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think it is diminished by age. Yeah, in a way that the discovery of the farmer is not. Yeah. Um, yeah it, it you, you you don't have any that's that's a dead gull in the window mm-hmm. that is a dead gull in the window that is not a prop you're, you're not thinking oh yeah. i wonder what how the prop guy did that mm-hmm. uh, as, as much as you like uh practical effects which this film is loaded with mm-hmm. uh age does not help us in the penultimate scene yeah not really like it's it yeah i i believe you since you saw it in a more contemporary setting yeah um you know the superimposed birds did way worse for me than anything in that you know if it's mostly practical effects i was cool with it but i I also still totally believe you because you know it also drives home that notion of not seeing it and let your imagination create it is always going to be, you know, more powerful than effects that will inevitably be in some way dated. Yeah. 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 It's just a reminder of that to juxtapose that scene with the farmer, you know? Yeah. Cause I mean that once again, that was in terms of power, that was the single most powerful moment and you know if if i'm being honest when i think about this film i should probably replace you know what what's my favorite i love that scene it's just it it's the shower scene of that movie yeah yeah you know it it, it's the it's the it's the master class it's the forte Mm -hmm. of the of the of the movie but but on a on a love level (laughs) that moment and, and part of it was enjoying your your giggle when it happened uh, and Mitch is getting into the car They've, he's gotten everyone in and he's the last one in and we, we I think we've had one look out the garage door at the scene and, and we're back intimate in the car he's closing the door and Just a it's little, great. No comment. No, no fun, comment. No nothing from well, anybody. Clearly, no clearly, shuts and <laughs> clearly nobody in the scene is hearing that. It's, Probably it's some, something added later. Yeah. But but that is that is Hitchcock. That is Hitchcock is having fun with us right there. But but I think. But I think it also it's a part of his closing statement. It's a part of his closing argument, around. Uh, and you know when I think about your love for the Adams family I just think the more you get to know Hitchcock uh, (laughs) the more you're going to love him because of his dark humor sensibility the more you pay attention the more it's there Uh, the more you discover the more you find (laughs) Uh, but uh, 
you know, we go from that then to that sea of nature taking control of what man thought he was in control of. Yeah. And and it's sort of like, I don't know. I, I think there's just a statement that Alfred Hitchcock can find that that is both, it's the human comedy, mm -hmm. you know, nature is going to beat us. We, we, you know, we, it, it yeah, just, there ain't it, no way around it. it. It's bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, and, and the, and the devil in us is going to laugh at us for not, I mean, that's what he's doing in that preview. Yeah. Too. He's laughing at, at the audacity that we should think birds are here for our you know gratification yeah you know planning the lecture has been most educational for me i've begun to feel very close to the birds and have developed a real sympathy for our little what was i saying oh yes i've come to feel very close to the birds and i've come to realize how they feel when I don't think I'll eat just now. Hardly proper with all of you here. I just saw Alfred in that moment. It was just like, this is so your movie, man. Yeah, that's fair. This is so you. And I, and I, I do have to say, it's probably, probably wouldn't have been my favorite if I hadn't gotten to see you enjoy it as much as you did when you giggled at that. And oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's absolutely wonderful. It also, you know, it serves a convenient purpose to de-escalate the end of this horror movie. Like something yes. as we're talking about the end of it, like it sort of, most of the elements of those last couple minutes, you know, essentially just being out in the car and driving away, just those couple yeah. minutes are calibrated to simultaneously make the point of the movie of nature gonna get us like we're, we're being dicks to nature it can outdo us while at the same time offering all of the elements needed to appease and de-escalate the audience Do you have a catchphrase that you use to wrap these up or do we go take the film and put it in a golden chariot and have it launched in a balloon up into the clouds or not there... quite hear that patreon people we, we need more <laughs> of you on board so that we can up the budget and get, get that, that golden, golden chariot, chariot. uh-huh